Hello, fellow comrades. I bring you Sunday greetings from the front. This is a beautiful Sunday and a pleasant one. And you can see that I'm happy, I'm excited being with you here once more. I know you'll be wondering why this comrade is always happy, always smiling each time he comes talking to us, although we're in war. But I want you to note that it is not very easy to find yourself in a struggle where a lot of happy things, a lot of wonderful things are happening every day, where people are rising up to the occasion from all parts of the globe, where people get up every day and do the things that they are supposed to do without waiting to even be assigned to do those things. This kind of a struggle is a struggle that only ends up in victory. I want to tell you that I know all of us are still reeling, are still excited, are still dancing concerning the images we saw in Belgium yesterday. And some of you have even expressed disappointment that you wanted to see same in Washington, that it was not the same in Washington. But let me tell you that uh, Professor Elvis Ngole Ngole, Professor Mingo Paul Gogomo and Professor Nkot, I mean, they are high ups in the CBD and party and they know exactly what to do. So that is why when they got to the United States, they took time off, sent personal invitations and even transported uh, brothers from the other side of the Mongo, French-speaking Cameroonians based in the United States, invited and transported them to Washington and made sure they only publicized the information of their visit a few hours to the event to make sure Southern Cameroonians don't show up so that they will have these people cheering them anytime they open their mouths and said whatsoever lie and they would take the images and send to President Paul and the rest of the world that our diasporans in the United States are very excited at the measures the head of state has taken to you know, address our problems, to tell the world that no, our diasporans are one, they are accepting a certain fallacy called a one and indivisible Cameroon. Dear brothers and sisters, you must be able to congratulate Comrade Elvis Cometa and a few Southern Cameroonians who even at that last minute abandoned everything and rushed there. That is why five minutes to the end of that stage managed event, Comrade Cometa spoiled the show because he told the ministers in their faces, he told them, the Southern Cameroons has a governing council. Southern Cameroons and Bazonia is a country now. Southern Cameroons and Bazonians have taken their destinies into their own hands and there will be no school resumptions on our territory in September, at least not any time dictated by La République du Cameroon. Comrade Cometa made it clear that we are gone. Go tell your master that Southern Cameroonians have come of age and they have started managing their affairs and they will manage their affairs at infinitum. This is the spirit that was picked up in Belgium. Only in Belgium, it was upped. It was given a different kind of coloration. It was made so beautiful and so wonderful. You saw Comrade Mark Barra, you saw Comrade Atanga Marcellus and others come in with force, with the coughing and place it before Minister Laurent Esso. That coffin did not only remind him of the coffin revolution. That coffin reminded him of another coffin he had trouble with just a few days before traveling to Belgium. You recall that Minister Laurent Esso went to decorate the corpse of late Bishop Bala posthumously to give distinction to the corpse of someone that La République du Cameroon established through one of their attorneys that he committed suicide. We all know that suicide is a crime under the laws of La Republique du Cameroon. How can someone commit suicide? How can someone commit a crime? And you assert clearly that this person committed a crime and you go to give that person a state distinction. These are contradictions. And these contradictions tell us clearly that La Republique du Cameroon is confused. That La Republique du Cameroon has lost the sense of direction. That that system is sinking. And I just have pity for those our brothers and sisters over the in La République du Cameroon, who are still believing in that system, who are still thinking that something good can come out of that evil rock, they should know that the time to get out of that boat before it sinks is now, because that boat is sinking. Now I bring you information from the front. The consortium has sent out a press release dated the 6th of August, 2017. That release indicates that with effect from Monday, the 14th of August 2017, ghost towns will move from one to three days. The ghost towns will now run from Monday, Tuesday, and up to Wednesday. And during this period, the consortium indicates 
that every other instruction coming from the Southern Cameroon's governing council must be respected scrupulously. The consortium indicates and insists that we will not want to see even bikes circulating on our streets, not even bikes being driven or being ridden by people or citizens from La Republic du Cameroon resident on our territories. Although this struggle is not directed towards them, we want them to know that they should respect the laws of our land. They should respect the directives given by those who manage our land and nobody will cause them any trouble. They are free to live on our lands, but they should respect our laws. This said, the consortium also reiterates that schools will not resume in September. Schools will not resume in August. Schools will not resume in the southern Cameroons until the conditions that were previously laid out in a press release issued on the 28th of August 2017 by the consortium and corroborated by the southern Cameroons governing council would have been met. If those conditions are not met, Forget about schools' resumption. Schools will resume at the time the consortium, the Southern Cameroon's governing council, and all other pressure groups operating would say the conditions are set for our children to go back to school. Fellow brothers and sisters, there is a message circulating on social media, purportedly from the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon, that all activities of registration or payment of fees at all not in Presbyterian schools are suspended until further notice because there is trouble on the land. It is true I have not seen that on any official headed paper from the Presbyterian Church, but I believe that the moderator of the Presbyterian Church, my moderator, who spoke to us, who told us that we are eagles and eagles do not eat with chicks on the ground, that our place is in the skies. I know that he is a man of God. I know that our pastors, that our reverend fathers, that our bishops are men of God and that they will not allow the body of Christ to be dragged into the mud. They will not allow the body of Christ to be rubbed into the mud by a reckless system that has come short of ideas and is ready to fight even the body of Christ. I know that our priests, our bishops, our pastors are not afraid of that which will affect just their flesh. They will be afraid of that which will affect affect their souls and they are at the service of Christ. They will not abandon the sheep at the time of trouble. No, the shepherds will lead the sheep. I know that they also remember the example of Archbishop Desmond Tutu in South Africa who stood up for the truth. They will still remember the activities of Bishop Romero of El Salvador who even gave his life for the truth. They will remember the actions of let Martin Luther King Jr. who stood up and fought right until the last moment he gave up the ghost for the freedom of the black people in the United States of America. I know that they will remember our own Cardinal Christian Tumi, who has been seen on the streets of Douala a number of times protesting against injustice. This is the time that all of us will have to rise and I know that no one will be left behind. This message I also bring to you from our fellow comrades who are in incarceration. I'm sure you all had the opportunity to see that very terrible two minute video that is circulating on social media everywhere. I'm sure you see the terrible conditions under which 12 of our comrades who were abducted and no one knew where they were are living. They are detained in terrible conditions where there are no lights. What did they do to deserve this? But even in those kind of conditions, they send out a message of hope. They send out a message of encouragement. They send out a message of continued resistance. In this second phase of our resistance, which is the active phase, the consortium is drawing our attention to the fact that there will be a lot of sacrifices made. The time that we will shout victory at last is not far. That is the reason we must continue to be steadfast. That is the reason we must continue to be strong. I'm sure you have also seen another message from another group of our detainees led by Mr. Patrick Ndango of the Manasata film. You know, he was deputy mayor in Bamenda 1. He too and a group of other people were abducted and he has sent out a message from that group saying they are urging us forward onward he says even if they are going to die let us continue the free because our freedom has got no price because we cannot afford 
57 more years of slavery and servitude because we cannot afford these evil conditions under which we find ourselves today. My dear brothers and sisters, I know that some of you still feel that you are in some nice comfort zones out there in La Republique du Cameroon because you have acquired wealth in that land, because you are married to people from across the Mongo. Take note that those of you who have those kind of, you know, mixed marriages and who are being used by the system now, trying to pit spouse against spouse because they want to transform us into spies, it wouldn't help you. Because take note, our brethren are married even to Americans, married to South Africans and everything, and we all live a comfortable life. I want to draw your attention to the fact that this struggle is for the future of our children. This struggle is also for our future, those of us who are not yet completely old, and mind you, even those who are completely old, like Molan Jolly Tumbe, is still fighting with us because he believes in the fact that as long as you still live, you should have hope and you should contribute positively to ensure that we cross the finish line. My dear brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring to you finally this very interesting revelation. We all heard Professor Mingo Paul Gogomo say it publicly in Washington that Barista Bala and Dr. Fontemneba and others with them are not terrorists, that they are not even criminals, that they were not arrested because of terrorism, that they were not arrested for the acts committed in the, in the northern zone and in the southern zone, that they were arrested for some other reason, another reason that is yet to be disclosed. You see, this is the first time that we are hearing this. It tells you the kind of falsehood in which we live. So, Professor Mingo Paul Gogomo, thank you so much for being our Messiah. Thank you for bringing us this revelation. And we are waiting now for President Paul Bia and his gang to come out loud and clear and tell the world why they are holding these people. Because it is now clear. We don't need the courts again to tell us that they are not terrorists. We have been told by the arch angels of the regime that our brothers are not terrorists, that our brothers committed no offense. Although they are not the ones telling us because we all know that none of them are terrorists, that none of them ever committed any of those offenses that have been trumped up in, in, in form of charges against them, the consortium and all the other structures involved in this struggle, we have always stood for non-violence. We will continue to stand for non-violence. My dear brothers and sisters, the time to guard your loins is now. You saw what one amber blew did in Belgium. I mean one amber punch. Uh, that when the B gentleman thought he was under the confines of La Republique du Cameroon and could take the laws into his hands, he went up with a chair and he was telling himself, I am B, I am B. You saw what one number punch did to him? I hope he has even got out of his coma. That is exactly the kind of punches that will send La Republique packing out of our land. Those punches are going to be more spiritual and not very physical. That is what happens when God sends the Holy Spirit to enter into David so that he can undo Goliath. Have a wonderful Sunday. Stay strong in the struggle. God is with us.